During the mid-nineteenth century, Baron Haussmann, under the direction of Napoleon III, transformed Paris into an urban city center where a new street system was devised and where bridges, aqueducts, and buildings, such as opera houses and museums, were built. This era was characterized by vast advancement in technology, which spawned the industrialization and specialization of the workforce and society. In turn, a new working class of people emerged and quickly became what Baudelaire believed to be the ruling class of France. In a statement he made to the bourgeois for the Salon of 1846, he noted, the government of the city is in your hands, and that is just, for you are the force. This meant that the bourgeois represented in large part the art market. The rise of this new working class, along with the industrialization of the workforce, greatly impacted everyday life. Time took on a new meaning. Ordered time controlled work schedules, putting in place the idea of a fixed work week and a new phenomenon, namely the time for leisure. Leisure activities included going to the countryside on a Sunday afternoon, walking the boulevards, going to the opera and the dance halls in the evening, and attending the Salon, France's annual government-sponsored art show. As described by Whitney Chadwick in Women, Art, and Society, Paris was the site of an evolution of a new social matrix as artists and writers, prostitutes, and the new bourgeoisie were drawn into the streets and parks, the cafes, and restaurants. One prominent social institution that contributed to the public's enjoyment of leisure in France was the Art Academy and the exhibitions associated with it, namely the Salon. The works exhibited in the Salon were selected by a panel of judges who would critique the value of the work of art based on artistic traditions and conventions that had long been established in the history of art. The reclining nude was a popular subject in academic art. However, there was a more or less fixed way to represent a female nude body. This painting by Cabanel represents the appropriate manner for depicting a female nude. It is the representation of a story of a goddess in ancient Greek mythology. The figure is passive, she looks away from the viewer. Her skin has a fleshy glow, she is fully modeled and very soft looking. No body hair is apparent, there is no representation of the abject, and there is no depiction of her genitals, which are contained by her crossed legs. Her body is highly idealized, we can see no sign of imperfections. Such figures as Venus and other female nudes were not to be associated with desire and sexuality. They were to be regarded as representations of the beauty of art. Considering the aforementioned characteristics, however, we have concluded that representations of the female nude in art history are an attempt at containing the female body within the acceptable social, political, and economic realm. Manet, who was well informed of this double standard in which these nude paintings were the focus of the male gaze, exposed this hypocrisy in his take of the reclining female nude, Olympia. The disgust and disdain that stem from Manet's Olympia lies not in the nudity portrayed in the painting, but mostly in the realism of the subject matter. Olympia is a prostitute. Indications of this lie not only in her name, but in the jewelry and accessories she wears to bed. The choker necklace, the flower in her hair, the bracelet, and the worn-in high-heeled shoes. Unlike the traditional female nude, Olympia does not look away pretending to be a modest figure. She looks straight at the viewer of the painting, the men of la haute bourgeoisie, who, incidentally, were the clients of her profession. It is for this reason that she becomes a monster of modernity. However, unlike the monsters that threaten culture from the margins of society, here she is, represented at the very center in one of the many manifestations of high culture in Paris. This painting, along with others of its kind, symbolized the beginning of a new type of art, that which we now call modern art. While future generations embraced Manet's raw realism, spectators of the 21st century essentially became desensitized towards the new modes of the female body. Because images of prostitution, nudity, and sexuality are so prevalent in the modern-day media, we no longer express sensitivity to past taboos. Has the perpetual desire to shock the viewer in the 21st century eliminated the need for artistic merit? And what impact does this lack of moral value in the depictions of the female body have on the identities of women? Mm -hmm.